I'm going to show you how easy it is to bias a tube guitar amp. And I'm going to demonstrate this using my vintage Fender Bassman amp. Now the uh, Fender Bassman amp has preamp tubes, which are these small, smaller tubes, and then it has also power tubes, and in this case two 6L6 tubes. And the power tubes are the only ones that we have to be concerned about setting the bias on. The preamp tubes do not require setting the bias. Now the Fender Bassman has two 6L6 tubes. Other amps might have different types of power tubes, 6550s, EL34s, and several other types of tubes. And also the Bassman has two tubes, we'll call it a pair. Uh, other amps might have a quad, a sextet, or an octet. And also in doing this bias, we're going to use a tool called the Bias Pro. And this is the Bias Pro. It's a very simple device used in conjunction with a digital voltmeter. And it helps us measure the cathode current flowing through a tube and allows us to set the bias for the tube. There are other devices on the market that can be used to set the bias on the tube amp. Uh, some the, the bias probe has an advantage of being very simple and cheap. You can get one for under $20, I think. And, but the limitation is that you can only set the bias of one tube or measure the bias on one tube at a time. Other devices would measure multiple tubes and take some different measurements all at the same time. So it's your choice. If you're not going to be doing it very often, you might want to go with the cheaper alternative of, of a bias, to bias probe type device or if you're going to do it often or can afford to have the luxury of doing it quicker, uh, go ahead and get the more expensive device. Okay, this is the Fender Bassman amp from the back. I've taken the back cover off and as you can see there are four preamp tubes here with the uh, tube shields on them. And then these are the two power tubes that we're going to be biasing. So now what I'm going to do is take it out of the case and we'll start the process of doing the uh, bias checking and setting the bias. Whatever tool you use to bias your amp should come with a set of instructions that would include graphs or charts that show the um, settings that you would use in the biasing. For instance, in this case, for the 6L6 tube, we have a chart here that plots the bias, tube, bias tool readings in millivolts which translate to cathode current against the, uh, the plate dissipation and power. And if you'll see here, there are a series of lines that represent the plate voltages that you might encounter in a particular amp. And so for an example, here is uh, the 500 volt line running right down through here. If we know that our amp has a plate voltage of 500 volts, then the center of this, they, they call it the operating window right here, of these darker lines between these two points, you can safely set the bias within these points. So for 500 volt plate voltage, the very center nominal set point would be where it crosses this center line, the 500 volts crosses this center line, and that is at about 36 36 millivolts or 36 milliamps of cathode current. Now, you can set the bias anywhere between 40, 45 milliamps down to approximately 20 milliamps, and it should still um, be a safe area as far as the tube's operating characteristics. But if you get too low, then you won't have quite as much power or punch coming out of the amp. Um, and if you get too high, then you're going to shorten the life of the tube. It's going to operate higher, more towards its maximum um, power dissipation. And so what I like to do for a starting point is to just 
set it at the nominal point, which will be 35 milliamps. Now, if you're setting your own, you can play with this a little bit. You can try some different settings, play your guitar through it, and see how the tone changes and which ones you like the most. But for this exercise and demonstration, I'm going to try to set it at about uh, 35, 36 milliamps. I've taken the amplifier out of its case. Um, you don't really have to do this. You could really set the bias with it still in the case in this amp, but it would be upside down. It'd be, a, it'd be very difficult for me to show you what I'm doing, so I've taken it out and turned it over. Um, and I've gone ahead and hooked up the speaker, the load that would normally be with this amp, and I've plugged it in. Uh, for the bias adjustments, we're going to have to have the load attached. We always, when we power up a guitar amp, want to have a load on it. Uh, we could damage the output transformer otherwise. I've also taken out the tubes so we can get that plate voltage I was telling you that we need uh, to uh, read the charts and set the bias. Um, so here is the, we're looking down, I've still got the, I've got the power turned off and, and let me just by way of warning say if you ever take your amp out of the chassis out of the case or are sticking probes into the tube socket, be very, very careful. I mean, we're talking about 500 volts, and believe me, uh, you can get a severe shock from that. I've been shocked a few times that way, and it's not pleasant, so uh, don't do that. It can kill you. Uh, so anyway, let's look at how we count the... Uh, we're going to be using pins 3 and pin 8 to measure the voltage. If you look at the tube socket, hopefully you can see it. There's a keyway right here, which is just a little indentation that helps the lets you plug the tube in correctly and get the pins oriented right. You count counterclockwise on this as far as the, the uh, pins. So this is pin one, the first one that you encounter going in a um, counterclockwise rotation from the keyway. So this is one, two, and this is three. That's going to be where we put our plus lead and then four, five, six, seven, eight. And that turns out to be the one just to the um, clockwise position of the keyway. That's where we put our other probe. Now I'm going to turn the power on and we're going to measure and you can see in our case it is 448 volts, 447 volts plate voltage. So we're going to go back and look at the charts again. I said uh, I was guessing it was going to be 500 and was basing what we were going to set it based off that, but now I'll go back and look at it again. Okay, back on the charts here, we're looking for 447, and the voltage line we have is 450, close enough. So we're going to look at 450, and it crosses the, uh, the midline right at 40 millivolts setting on the bias probe, which will translate to 40 milliamps of cathode current. So we're going to go back and set the bias to 40 millivolts. We're ready to set the bias. I've got the tubes plugged back in. Got the bias probe plugged in to the tube socket and then the tube plugged into the bias probe here. And then the meter sitting here that will read the, um, the bias voltage. Actually, it'll read the voltage that represents the uh, cathode current. Um, and as I said before, important to have the speaker load hooked up. Uh, I've got it turned on. I've got it on standby. And we let it warm up for at least a minute before we take it off standby. It's upside down, so everything looks backwards. Um, here is the access to the um, adjustment for the bias. The potentiometer is mounted under the chassis, but there's a point we can reach through. We can access it here to, to turn the uh, potentiometer. And like I said, you can do it in the chassis. You'd have to reach in, I mean in the uh, case. It would be upside down, and you'd have to reach in and uh, put a screwdriver through this point right here. Uh, let me say also, as far as the bias adjustment, these old fender amps, in a lot of cases, had a balance adjustment instead of a uh, true bias adjustment. And what the balance adjustment did, 
was it allowed you to balance the uh, the bias voltage between the two tubes and that was meant for the day when um, we didn't have matched tubes we had just whatever tubes you pulled out of the box and the characteristics were different so it gave you a means to by adjusting the uh, balance adjustment to set the bias the same on both tubes but it did not allow you to set the um, the bias up or down on both of them and so you can modify amps that have that balance adjustment to a true bias adjustment and uh, I'm not going to get into that or explain that here but on the uh, the internet you can find references to how to do that um, so what we have what I have done is this did have originally a balance adjustment I rewired it for a uh, true bias adjustment so if we turn that pot the bias on both tubes will change in the same direction in the same amount at the same time so I've got it on the right tube the bias probe and I'm going to take it off of standby you can hear the speaker activate uh, I'm going to make sure that my volumes are turned down all the way because we want to no signal on it when we're measuring the bias voltage okay if we look at our meter over here it reads 35.9 so we're going to, to set it 40 I put the uh, adjusting tool in this case I'm using this little spudger tool you can use a screwdriver stick it in the slot we're going to turn it Okay, so we have it set on 40, which is what we were wanting to set our bias on. So now we've set the bias on the right tube. The left tube is a matched tube to the right one. So the reading, if we put the bias probe on that tube, should be exactly the same as this one is. And um, I would recommend going ahead and checking that. I'm not going to do it for this video, but, uh, you know, turn it off. Let the tubes cool off. By the way, you can get seriously burned on these tubes so be careful uh, let the tubes cool off and then um, move the bias probe over to this tube and check that it's the same bias uh, once that's done then the chassis can be put back into the case and then I recommend uh, playing the amp very hard through the amplifier um, while watching these tubes to make sure that uh, they exhibit the the color that they're supposed to and when I say that these gray plates inside should never be a cherry red color if you notice that those turn red either while you're playing it real hard in the test or the amp is just sitting then there's a problem uh, that the amp is probably losing bias or else there's something wrong with the tube so uh, next we'll put the uh, amp back in its case and uh, try it out Okay, we finished our bias job, and now we're going to test it by playing a guitar fairly uh, loud through the amplifier. Okay, so as you could see, as he was playing, the uh, plates are still gray. They didn't change color, and just the filaments is the only real light that you see in the tube, and that's the way it should be. If these would turn cherry red, then we got a problem. So that's the way that we uh, bias the amp. Uh, I think you can see it's pretty simple. <laughs> 